Um, I will keep an answer surprised. Well, you are surprised, aren't you? <coughs> I go here. Um, <coughs> what you mustn't do is ask, what is the fellow behind him doing? <laughs> now, <laughs> but let's leave that to the <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I was going to, the title was, was Further Education, uh, where is it going, and something like that. Um, but I'm going to start with my further education, because I learned a lot this week, and I never stopped learning. On Wednesday, I was at Leeds United Football Ground, which my sponsor, Helpling, the plumbing <coughs> people, had hired for me in, in cooperation. And we had 7,000, just under 7,000 kids, 9 to 30 year olds, with their teachers. And I did an hour and a half to them in maths. We had pot screens, and it was something I'd never done before. There was a wind howling past us. It was absolutely freezing, but it seemed to have gone very well. Guinness insisted that we do a test at the end, a test. Hand everybody a card and a pen. So we had 7,000 pens, 7,000 cards, 7,000 people passing the thing around. And the test, one of the first questions. <coughs> Gals. Can't read your graphs, when only nine, he did a sum in record time. Please do the sum that you said, add the numbers from one up to a hundred. So go on, do it, starting now. Have you done it? Well, can't read your graphs, did it very quickly. And I asked, so what did he do and what was the answer? And I told him the answer. He added one plus a hundred and got hundred and one. And he thought, well, I know, what's the second in the reach end? Two and ninety-nine, hundred and one. 3 plus 98, 101. How many pairs of numbers in 150? 50 times 101, 5,050. Done. And at the end, I asked the kids, what was the right answer? A good 90%, as far as we can see, wrote the right answer. An hour and a half later. They also wrote the answer, what is the binary number for 9? The binary doesn't come in to the curriculum until September. It was cut out of the curriculum in 1998 because the people who set our educational curriculum for schools are mental. There's no other word, there's no other description. They yeah, were out of their tree. In this technological age, to say we won't bother teaching binary numbers, it just, it just bears, it, it defies logic. <coughs> the sun shone straight down the weather sign in Egypt, what day? Midsummer's day, they all got it. Uh, starting with one and one, what is the seventh Fibonacci number? Thirteen, they all got it. If a pendulum swings and you want it to swing twice as fast, how much do you shorten the string? You shorten it to only one quarter. They all got it. And the first primary teacher I spoke to afterwards said, it was amazing because they all got it. They got them all. But that doesn't end there because they all get a poster which restates the maths and they get a, 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 a teacher's pack which restates the maths so they can take it back to school and harden up on it and the teacher's notes takes it a step further and that's, that's what I did. So I'm so thrilled that I did that because it taught me that it's possible to do something on a large scale and teach on a large scale. In America, <coughs> MOOCs, have you heard of MOOCs? Uh, MOOCs, yes. Massive open online tutoring or courses are really taking off. It is the way it would really relieve a lot of the pressure on yourselves if you really had experts who produce a tailored piece on video, on screen, that is absolutely honed to its directness and its finite a delivery. It will be so powerful. It will come, but we're going to drag our feet getting there because we always do. <coughs> right, that's an intro. Excuse me. My, I, <coughs> I get so excited that I cough. <coughs> <coughs> the conference about further education. Further education comes under two categories, surely. <coughs> there are people who've had a good life, who've really enjoyed life, and then later on they want to learn something new. And so they take on another course. They are a joy to teach because they've already been successful, they've already had a happy life, and they just want to learn more. I had a friend who took Mandarin when she was 60, loved it so much, and realised there wasn't a decent tutor book. She produce a tutor book, Mandarin to English, and it is on sale in this country, but more than that, it's on sale right across China. <coughs> and that was uh, as a student to a, to a course uh, further education. Those are people of fine. But you get anybody can teach them because they want to learn and it's fine. The others <coughs> are the people who are desperate to learn more. Let's get rid of this. Excuse me. <coughs> 
and the other people, and the most important people for you are the people who desperately want to learn more because if they don't, they don't have a career, they don't have a future, they don't have a life. And these are the people we've got to concentrate on. Why are they in such a state? Because the system has failed them. And the system fails them quite regularly. From my own experiences, this happens. <coughs> um, uh, teacher retired half a mile from me in the same club as me. And one of my friends asked her, and I happened to hear the conversation, you're retiring. Um, are you sad or happy that you're retiring as a maths teacher? in a, actually, I thought, quite a good school in Slough. And she said, he said, are you happy about it or sad? She said, well, <clears throat> just as well, I've always been a bloody awful maths teacher. And I thought, I wrote an article about this in some mag, and I thought, how can this person have been like that so she only taught to take the wage check? How can the school have allowed that to have happened all the way through her damn career? How could the how could they pacify the parents who said, my kids have been great at maths and wow, I did, yeah. yeah. Oh, it happens. They always have dip years, don't worry, they'll come back. How could it have happened? It's horrible. <coughs> then, <coughs> in the fag end estate in Slough or in Brickwell, there's a school called Lynch Hill. It tells you what it's all about in that area, Lynch Hill. And Lynch Hill was a disaster 20 years ago, and Gillian Coffey took it on and put it in the top 3% of all primary schools in the country and got the OBE for doing it and now with her we're building a secondary school because she said, I cannot hand kids over to a system that's going to not service them and let them down. So I want to take them from 3 to 18 and a lot of us are helping her to, uh, to achieve that goal. goal. <coughs> um, The kids who come to you, the 17 and 18 year olds who come to you, desperate for a qualification, are damaged. They are in trouble. Many of them have not learned any maths since, since the end of primary. Because in primary, they didn't come to a certain standard, and so in secondary, they never even bothered to continue teaching them maths. And they let them get away with it. Many, many schools have done this. And kids come genuinely with a, a mental um, attitude to maths equal to a nine-year-old. And it's disgraceful. It really is. <coughs> it can happen so easily. I was in primary school, always top or next to top, and moved from Bristol to Bolton, where my parents were, 200 miles. But I found them. And and, uh, <coughs> and as well. And I was there, and in those days without television, an accent was a foreign language. And so I was talking in a foreign language. <clears throat> the result was, I was informed 2B because I'd done so well in my, in my uh, 11 plus, 2B. In that year, I got into the chess team. They didn't re remember anybody who had never learned chess before getting into the chess team until the third year. I got into the first year. I got a prize for maths and a prize for chess. The next year I was in form 3C, next year 4D, next year lower 5E, and the last year 5E because they didn't have a 5F. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a failure, two of 100% in maths, and I got geography as well. Why didn't they get the others? Because they hadn't taught me and I hadn't bothered to be taught. I got in the real world and I took off like a rocket. <clears throat> well, I worked for an aircraft company. No, no, no. That, that was it. But it turned around. So you can turn these people around. And that's what it's all about. Further education is about turning them around. <clears throat> How do you do that? Very quickly. You have to show them things that are plain as a pipe stuff and they cannot see. And that's what you do. You have to repair the confidence they totally lack. That's the first priority. You as teachers in further education, must be mentors as well as teachers of the subject. You must be the pal they've never had in education. It's essential you say, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. Just assistance for you. And once you get your confidence, you will go like a rocket. This is happening because at 17 and 18, they are getting their confidence in, in terms of maturity, in terms of their sex drive, and, and in terms of 
<coughs> their sexual activities. In so many ways, they're gaining confidence. But in learning, they have not. They fail. I've been seen to fail. I've been put in the set that's failed. I've been left to fail. And they will not get a decent job unless you turn that round. So it's essential that your colleges and your schools form mentoring relationships with the kids beyond the course. That's the first priority. Only then will your, your, your courses become a club. A club with comfort, a club with a relaxed attitude, and the confidence will start to grow. And that's exactly what you have to do. So how do you take them somewhere else? You surprise them. You show them things like this. This is quite remarkable. Anybody know who produced this? Leonardo, yes, Leonardo da Vinci is writing backwards. Why did he write backwards? Some people say it was left handed so he wrote that way. Some people say it was a code. Some people say it was his dyslexic, which wasn't a word then. And one of the newspapers two weeks ago isn't going to be a word now. Um, right? And I agree. I agree with that. Dyslexia <coughs> is a malfunction of the education system. That's what I believe it is. Okay? So, why did he write backwards? To annoy his bloody teachers. <laughs> to say, I am an individual. I'm different to everybody else. He was a talented individual. There are many, very frustrated individuals who still are trying to say, but I don't learn like that. Your pace is wrong for me. You're not taking me along the way I want to go. I don't understand this. I don't conform. I'm not like the other kids. And they are left to wallow at the bottom when really they can be incredibly gifted. When I go to schools, because I take them to areas they've never been, and they sometimes say, will you come and teach our gifted and talented? And I always say, no, I'll only come if I teach the lot. And you look at the failures and see how many of them prick their ears up when I'm talking. Because I'm taking them places they haven't gone and showing them how brilliant they are or can be. And that's what you have to do with education. And the schools, through the system of the badgering and the control, are not doing it. So what's this? It's, it's, he wants to be an individual, and in this he shows what? An aid to measure it. It's very simple. That is about six feet. It's the same as your height, as a stature. That's why it's in the square. If you wanted to measure 30 feet of rope, all you need to do, and people on boats do this, one, two, three, four, five, five, six is 30 feet of rope, two seconds. 30 feet of rope measure. Do you understand? You can teach very, very rapidly if we teach the right things, if we empower them, but not if we take them through the dirty of addition and subtraction and multiplication and division. It's appalling. It's terrible. I'll be showing in my, my, um, in my workshop later how to use a calculator because nobody knows. And definitely nobody teaches the kids how to use a calculator, but if you go and Google it, there are the calculator people are desperate for you to use the bloody calculator correctly and empower it, and empower yourselves with it. But nobody does it. So there you are. Let's look at this other. That's measuring strong. Let's look at uh, what point is halfway up the human body. It is the the waist, the belly button. Yes. I did this, this chat to 200 surgeons and their wives, and they all said the belly button and the waist. It's wrong. Half your body is your hip bone or your pubic bone there before things start to get interesting. <laughs> right, that's where it is. That's half of your body. <coughs> He's eight spans tall. If he puts his arm up, he's ten spans tall. The fig leaf, or the hip bone, is four spans from the floor, and that is another span, five spans. So he's in a circle with the navel of center and five spans. Right, that's okay, body measurements. Golden ratio, lots of things in there. Great for artists to, to, to study. But this is the secret to all education. That's it. That's there. They're staring you in the face. And I've never seen it until one day I realized it. And nobody sees it. That is the secret of all education. Where did Da Vinci get that idea from? He nicked it. <laughs> all education is theft. You're not learning anything that other people haven't learned before. It is theft. You steal. So if you're going to steal, steal from the best. No genius wants to die and take his ideas with him. None. They want it to continue. That's what it's all about. That's the human race. It's a human race in a relay race. And everybody wants to take.
take the baton one step further. And if you take the baton one step further in every, any subject, one step further than anybody's ever gone, that is genius. That's all it is. So you're not teaching kids genius. You're teaching kids just to do what people have done before and pointing out to them there is no reason for their hang-ups. There's no reason for their lack of confidence. It's just they've been damaged by the system and you at college are the last chance to lose them for them. Because if they don't succeed with you, they ain't possibly going to succeed ever. So that's how important your colleges are. Your further education colleges are the last chance to lose Really try as hard as you can to, to just get them slowly on the right track. When you look at geniuses, as I've done, I've read the history of maths and science till it's coming out of my ears. Um, I'm trying to, write, trying to write a book about it now with so many ideas that don't seem to be published anymore. And it's growing like topsy. The book is getting so big, it's ridiculous. But when you look at them, when you look at Galileo and Kepler and Pythagoras, Archimedes, Archimedes is truly brilliant. But there were people who made things so simple. John Dalton's atomic theory. I read it and felt, had I been there, I couldn't have helped to discover what he discovered. That's what genius is. Being boned up to do it. And any one of us who were boned up in the same way. Isaac Newton is known as the greatest British scientist of all time. But Galileo wrote, when he was blind, he dictated it to other people, the maths that he discovered in his 20s and 30s, which was how a cannonball flies through the air, how things curve as they come off a cliff, how things fall through the air. He wrote it down, thank goodness, put it in the book. Johannes Kepler, um, Johannes Kepler, oops, Johannes Kepler was, um, was a um, Scott Stargazer, what's the word? Um, astronomer. astronomer, thank you very much. How could he be an astronomer? He was too short sighted, he couldn't see the sky. How could he be an astronomer? But he was an astronomer, and he got the figures from somebody else. He passed the figures on, put it down, realized the planets were going around in ellipses, wrote it all down, he died. Galileo died. Newton came along, he got Galileo's book, this is everything falling on Earth. Kepler's book, this is the planet going around the sun. He said, but hang on, it's the same maths. I'll put the two together, I'll call it gravity. We call him the greatest British scientist of all time. He read two books. <laughs> That's what you say to your kids. You cannot see. What do you need to do? If you want to be a plumber. These kids are asking for the world. These kids are saying, can I be a plumber? Because I know a plumber can earn a decent wage. Can I be an electrician? Can I be a gas fitter? Because I know I can earn a decent wage and get out of the trouble I'm in doing this. Can you not see? It should be so easy to say, of course you can. And when you've done that, you want to come back and learn more and do more because we'll have cured this failure that's been inbred in you. We'll have cured this hang up you've got. I can't do maths, I've never been a man. Bollocks. Of course they can do maths if you build their confidence. And that is what it's all about. <coughs> Once you get the feeling, wow, I can learn. The troubles are behind you. The only thing you're doing in education is teaching people how to learn. Nothing else. So your courses don't really matter. What matters is they gain confidence that they can learn what you put in front of them, cope with it, understand it, even enlarge on it themselves. Once they've got that feeling, I can do that, they know that they can do it with any other subject they choose and then the world is their oyster. All you're teaching is confidence. Have confidence, you can do it. Thank you very much. <laughs>